<laughs> well, uh, we're with one of the animals I know a lot of you are extremely excited to get to know in the Mara. And I know from all of our presenters, the person who is most excited about these particular critters is Jamie. And uh, it is a very lazy one at the moment. Looks to be a, a sub-adult, uh, quite, quite young, but all on its own out in the open plain having a schnooze. So we're on our way towards that big herd of buffalo. And Eggsy said, there's a hyena! And there indeed it is, and the hyena paying very, very little notice of us whatsoever. Hey, little one. Now, most of the main hyena dens from here are quite a long way away, but that doesn't mean there isn't another den in this area. Now, the clans in this part of the world are absolutely massive, and they do give the lions a hard time. And quite often when you find a hyena sleeping in the open like this, if you look carefully around, which we've been doing, you might find another one not too far away. Oh, biting fly. Well, Lynn's one-word tweet about being in the Maasai Mara is spoiled. Now, well, we're being spoiled because the hyena's lifted its head. Hey, little one, those flies biting you. Kind of got a bemused look on its face. Or oh, it's going to go back to duties. Now, we're very close to that big herd of buffalo. And something I haven't yet got to show you, which is, I think, one of the prettiest antelopes in all of Africa. And they're being quite playful up ahead. And uh, hopefully they should also be dropping babies quite shortly. And uh, that is the Thompson's gazelle. So as we got some Tommies and the big herd of buffalo up ahead and some Topi. And who knows, if we look carefully, there might even be a Coke's heart beast or three. Oh, zebra, giraffe, Topi, Thompson's gazelle, buffalo. Uh, driving up to leopards would like to know why do vehicles in the Mara have roofs whether as they don't in the Sabi sands well there's a couple of reasons uh, one is it rains a lot more here so you tend to get wet and also because we're very high we're up about a thousand six hundred meters above sea level uh, it it's very temperate so quite often you can go out on a full day safari eggs where do you want me forward back this is perfect oh you got the little guys playing there so there we go, Thompson's Gazelle, there's some youngsters having a bit of a frolic. I think they are gorgeous. Oh, there we go. Now we get two species of gazelle that we can look forward to finding out here. Uh, the Thompson's Gazelle is by far the most common. And in all our travels in the last few days, I've see, only seen Grant's gazelle once, and that was way down south. But I'm sure we will find them as we keep moving. Now, as you can see, eggs, what can we see? Thompson's and a zebra about to run past. We've got some zebra coming in. Now, up around the camp, there are thousands upon thousands of zebra at the moment on the escarpment. Ah, Vicky. Uh, Vicky wants to know, are there more animals in Kenya or are we just having a good day? Now, Vicky, we're in the quiet season and, uh, well, they're in the Maasai Mara, the an animal density is, is a lot more than the Sabi Sands. It's these alluvial floodplains, these open grasslands. They've got two rainy seasons a year. Uh, so your animal density in this part of Kenya is much higher than the Greater Kruger. So uh, we actually, well, what would you say? Good day, quiet day, or average day? Um, I would say average day. So we're asking the expert who works here every day, so this is an average day. So I think we're, we're definitely going to be spoiled. Let's get a little bit closer and have a look at the buff. Oh, and the topi. We haven't even looked at the topi. Oh, sorry, Kirsten, I didn't quite hear you there. Okay, well, we get ourselves into a good position. We're going to see, uh, go see how James is doing with the setting sun in South Africa. Oh, 
Okay, there's the cutest little thing happening at the moment. So buffalo are one of the only species where the, the animals are able, to, the babies are able to suckle while mom is moving. And this little guy we're looking at now has been doing that. But he has got the biggest milk moustache you have ever seen. Let's just try it. get into position. It was really, really cute. Let's see if we can see Mr. Milk Moustache. There he is. Hey, you. Look here, don't hide behind mom. Oh, is the pole in the way? Sorry, eggs. Let's go forward. There he is. Can you see him? Look at that. Look at that milk moustache. Isn't he just the sweetest? So, with the multiple rainy seasons in that chair, the buffalo literally have babies throughout the year. As you can see, the lush green grass and all the buffalo looking very happy and well fed at the moment. As are all the animals we've seen so far. You can just hear them munching on the grass. Now, of course, all of you guys out there, I know there's a lot of birders, and I've been really, really excited about the birds that we've been finding in, in, in East Africa so far. But I've made sure I haven't started my bird list till I could start it live with you. So we can go bird for bird. Uh, with our East African list and I've got a bird for you right now and I hope the bird is ready because I think I can't remember whether James showed them last time but it could definitely be a first for a lot of our viewers out there and uh, we're very excited to show you one of the most exquisitely beautiful birds in Africa don't fly away they're not going to fly away, don't fly away, they're just doing a bit of displaying. So we've just got to get through the massive herd of buffalo and uh, we're about to show you uh, something that I'm sure a lot of people have been wanting to see. You might have seen pictures, uh, but now you get to see them live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya, from the Mara Triangle, we bring you the crowned crane. How's that eggs? Good. There we go. So there we go. A pair of crown cranes. And uh, I know it's really special to see them, but as we... Oh, James did not see them last time. So as we traverse, um, we're going to be seeing quite a few of them. Uh, I think I've seen about 16 or 17 different pairs in the last couple of days. And they are exquisitely beautiful. You can see why well, they're named the crowned crane with those magnificent crowns on their head. And of course, foraging in the grasses for bohos and bugs and things. They're going behind the pole, Eggsy is telling me. I'll, I'll move forward. Okay. I'm going to get them directly opposite you, Eggs. How's that? A bit more? Yep. Perfect. There we go, isn't that beautiful? And you can see there's still a lot of clouds around and rain clouds around at the moment. We haven't had much rain today, but I think it might rain tonight. Oh, we're about to call the traffic jam. I'm just wait for the car to get a bit closer. Okay guys, I'm just have to move forward so the vehicle can get past us. Hold on. Here we go. I'll just wait for the car to go past. So apparently lots of you are very excited about seeing a crown crane for the first time. Uh, it is exquisite, so we're going to give you another awesome view of it. Now, they will nest in the, the big marshes uh, that are around here. They build up nests out of... Uh, reeds and, 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 and grasses and they build a, a mound up in the marshes and that, that's where they, they, they'll nest and one of the biggest predators of the crown crane is actually monitor lizards and they get after the eggs and chicks while they're still in the nest. They have a very very distinct call. Uh, like most cranes they're very beautiful to look at but they definitely weren't blessed with a good singing voice. So not the best best sounding birds. 
Max is wondering, can they fly? Yes, they can, Max. They're actually quite good flying, uh, at flying, but as you can see at the moment, they are, are foraging, trying to catch the, the last insects before uh, the sun sets. <laughs> Lorena says she wishes her hair looked that good. Uh, well, fortunately for them, they're born with it, Lorena. They don't even have to work at it. Now, uh, can you see the topi from here? No. Let's go back a bit. So the cranes are, are, are being a bit naughty and walking into the poles again. So we are going to start having to head back up the escarpment shortly. But I'll show you some topi quickly. Can you get them their eggs? So you must remember a lot of these animals that we're seeing at the moment are, are residents. So they do not migrate with the Great Migration. The Great Migration is on its way. The last I heard it was 47 kilometers to the south of, uh, in, in Tanzania, south of the Kenyan border. So we are keeping a, a close lookout for when they're coming to visit us. So topi, buffalo, uh, certain herds of Thompson's gazelles, certain zebras, uh, not all the animals join the Great Migration. Some of them will, will stay put, but of course, it, I'm just blown away. And can you wait for when there's 1.2 million wildebeest dotted across these plains? But we're going to keep moving and uh, make our way up towards the escarpment. Hopefully, we're going to be able to find some more fantastic creatures for you. While we do that, uh, let's go to Taylor, who's in the west on Arethusa. <laughs> 